good morning. It's February 6th, 2024, and I'm currently on a plane to Los Angeles for a quick four-day trip just for work and to see some friends and to reflect. You know, my relationship with LA, I would say is a love-hate relationship. I moved here when I was 18 and I moved back home when I was 22. So the time I did live here was BC, you know, before Christ. So coming back to LA now as a mature Christian is always a reflective, meditative journey for me. It's a time where I can truly thank the Lord for where I was and where he took me from. You know, back then I had no awareness to sin. I had no sensitivity or knowledge of temptations, of God, of the depths and darknesses of this world. You know, I, I did as anyone else and everyone else did. You know, that was exactly what I wanted to do. And back then, you know, I would have called myself being, quote unquote, in alignment with the universe, right? The reason I would say my relationship with LA is a love-hate relationship is because I loved the experiences and the art and the challenges and all the ups and downs and everything that happened in between. You know, it was a place where I felt like I could conquer the world on my own without my parents and where I could be autonomous in my choices and what I wanted. You know, LA was like a diving board into a deep pool for me. And I dived headfirst into a life full of traveling and doing all this creative stuff. but me diving into that deep pool, I didn't have the life fest of God. I didn't have the life fest of the knowledge of Christ. And so I dived not knowing how to swim. And for those four or five years I was in LA, I was practically drowning. Six thirty a.m. I woke up at five thirty. I couldn't sleep. My eyes were just bloodshot open. You know, I decided to just take a little morning walk in the brisk, cool air. God woke me up to always spend time with Him, to take a morning walk with Him. There's nothing like taking a morning walk with Jesus. Him on your heart. You guys just talking. It truly is a relationship and it truly is a walk. <laughs> and I show this walk by literally sometimes just taking a walk with Jesus. We'll just come down and we'll just pray like this. Jesus, you're so good. And you're so kind to me. And you're so thoughtful. And your thoughts towards me are precious. There's no animosity that you ever have towards me. You love me because I'm in you and you made me perfect by your blood. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for changing me. Thank you for using me for your work. LA, in a lot of areas and in a lot of ways, built endurance and confidence in me to learn how to take battles head on, to learn just the experiences of life and to have a deep gratefulness and gratitude of other people's struggles and what other people go through. You know, it taught me so many things about life, and people, relationships that can only be learned through experience. I was exposed to an entirely different way of, of life compared to what I was raised in. You know, the beach is really one of my favorite places to be. Not only do I have Bayesian blood in me, Caribbean blood, so there's a part of me that loves the beach simply because of that, but I think it's the tranquility, the peace, and just the gospel reality of the water, how the waves billow in, and how it takes back everything that used to be. It reminds me of the life of the new believe, the life that is new, made new in Christ. You know, the water is the word. 
as Jesus says, and it literally washes all of our sins away, our past away, our guilt and our faults away. And so every time I'm at the beach, I'm just reminded of the goodness of God in continually washing us, cleansing us, purging us, and just making us new, making us clean, making us perfect in his sight. We got the beach over on that end with the with the waves billowing in and the reminding of you know being washed but then we got the still water right here as the psalmist says in psalms 23 jesus the good shepherd leads us by still waters peaceful waters he leads us to places that are good for our soul that put our soul at ease that put our soul at rest you know jesus said come unto me all ye who are heavy laden i will give you rest and so when I'm at still waters like this, every single time, no matter what kind of still water, I'm always reminded of the rest that we have in Jesus. Rest from the chaos of this world, rest from the workings of our own sin and trying to be right in our own eyes. The rest of, you know, me being in L.A. doesn't feel like anyone's at rest here. L.A. is a place of constant work, constant striving after wind and, you know, my life BC before Christ, that was that was every single day for me. I was striving after wind. I was trying to do so many things to, you know, for the sake of my own fame, for the sake of my own pride, for the sake of my own platform. And it didn't go anywhere. I was just striving after wind every single day and it, it never fulfilled me. But this still water is a representation of the true rest that Christ led me to. And it's only found in him only found in him and so this la trip has been a reminder you know of where i came from who i used to be and who i am now and the environment can't change me no more because greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world people in the world it's easy to get changed by your environment but if you're rooted in christ it's harder it's harder for the environment to change you because if you truly know who you are you won't change. You won't fumble. If you know who you are in Christ and if you know the glories of Christ, the person of Christ, the majesty of Christ, no one else compares. Nothing else compares. And so as I just sit by the still waters, I'm just, it's just reminded by the goodness of God that we have in his, uh, in his, in his only son.